We got Joey McKenna here at the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Um, you've graduated recently from Ohio State, so now you're focusing solely on freestyle. What's it like to kind of have maybe the monkey of folk style off of your back and getting to focus on one thing? Yeah, it's uh, really exciting. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Uh, ever since I started having some success on the international stage, I've always been looking forward to what it's going to be like to be done uh, with folk style wrestling in college and just focus on that Olympic and world dream. So uh, it's been pretty pretty cool so far. Um, been a different transition, uh, something to get used to and going from you know amateur to pro. Um, so it's been really interesting on that front and just figuring things out. But on the wrestling side, it's amazing um, not having to go top and bottom. It's really cool. Just work on my feet a lot and uh, just really just getting better in technical positions. I think that's one of the main focuses of freestyle, um, positional and technical focuses. And that's what I love most about this sport. So it's, it's awesome that I can really focus on those things uh, full time now. Yeah, you talked about the transition a little bit, not doing top and bottom, that, that kind of thing. What's it like not having classes to kind of attend? And your day's probably freed up a lot more. I, I mean, what does a day look like for you now? Yeah, um, well, I mean, right now we're at camp, so that's pretty scheduled for me. But, um, you know, as, as I get into September and start training heavy for, uh, you know, 2020 this year, um, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm waking up every morning, getting better, doing my cardio, my lifting, getting my mat time in. Um, and really just focusing all around on wrestling, my areas on where I can get better, and uh, just being wary of kind of the trends that are going on in wrestling right now. Um, so really just, I think it's gonna open up a lot more time for me to be more of a student of mm -hmm. the sport. Um, I mean, I've always been a student, but with class and these scheduled practices, um, you know, all these mandatory things that you have with college athletics, I think that you know, I'll have more time to just kind of focus on myself and really focus on the process, um, on what it takes to get there to try to be a world and Olympic champ. Yeah. So your 2019 season ended at the last chance qualifier. Since then, what are some things that you've been working on? What are some things that you learned from this past season of freestyle for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, all the guys in my weight are really good <laughs> and I knew that going in, but, um, you know, I, I still believe that I'm up there with the best and I still believe that I can make the Olympic team next year. Um, but so now, I mean, I've just been really focusing on the things that are going to get me there uh, a lot more on my offense, my attacks, on ways that I can score and counter offense. Um, so really just scoring opportunities. I think that's going to be really important, especially in a weight class like 65 kilo in the U.S. and in the world. I mean, it's one of the toughest, I, I believe. And, um, you know, I think just being on my game at all times and going into practice every day and focusing on something, something that I need to work on and get better at is, you know, it's going to kind of help me, help me get there. Yeah, so you are making a move to the Pennsylvania RTC. Talk about um, the decision behind that and kind of what led you there. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've been around a lot of different people in wrestling my entire life. Um, I went to Blair because I wanted to be challenged. I wanted uh, a great opportunity for myself. So I went to Blair, ended up going to Stanford again to challenge myself, have a great opportunity. Transferred to Ohio State. Again, all the same reasons, kind of things that I've stuck by. And, um, you know, in, in looking at RTCs after the season, um, in that kind of transition period, I just wanted to keep an open mind and really see what opportunities um, were out there. and you know, what things I could accomplish. And, um, you know, I chose the Pennsylvania RTC just because I think it offers me the best opportuni opportunity holistically. Um, you know, I had a, a relationship with Coach Slay from the Junior Worlds in 2014 and 2015. So that was a, you know, a familiar bond that I had. Uh, it's East Coast, you know, I went from Jersey all the way to Cali to Ohio. It's a little closer to home, so that's really nice. Um, you know, and and the area of Philadelphia, what what the Pennsylvania RTC has going on, um, they have a whole wrestling ecosystem down there. Something that can kind of push me outside of my comfort zone and and take me outside of just the boundaries of wrestling. Um, it's going to offer me opportunities to, besides pursue my Olympic goals, it's going to offer me opportunities to serve, beat the streets, Philly. Uh, it's going to offer me opportunities to 
potentially start start my business career a little bit, um, start working towards that while I'm wrestling in the next cycle, um, and you know maybe the potential for other educational and leadership opportunities. I'm thinking about grad school in the future, so that's definitely uh, on on my mind. Um, but right now, I mean, the focus is 2020, so try not to look too pa too much past that. Yeah. Um, kind of drawing a blank on the guys who are currently at the Pennsylvania RTC other than those that have recently retired. Um, do you know who they are and ha do you have any kind of relationships with those guys? Uh, so they got Brent Fleetwood at 57, mm -hmm. Ethan Lezak at 61, both college guys that also just recently graduated. Um, somewhat new to the freestyle scene, so I'm interested to grow alongside them. Um, and Dan Valamont, he's at 74 mm -hmm. kilo, so he'll be a good partner for me uh, to challenge me give, me, give me a different feel. And then, of course, uh, Chase Pam, he's still around, and then BJ is recovering, but still around. So, And besides that, you know, the Penn and Drexel wrestlers, just like every RTC, working out with the college guys, you know, giving that trade off, getting them better as well as uh, they're getting us ready for our competitions. Yeah, you mentioned your relationship with Coach Slay. Um, he's kind of bringing up guys all over, you know, like he's bringing up talent. He's part of um, junior world teams and things like that. Can you talk about him as, as a coach and what it's like to have been around him? Yeah, um, I mean, right, he's done exactly what I want to do, um, which is encouraging. He knows a path to get there. I mean, I think there's many paths to get there. Uh, as we see in this sport, there's no cookie cutter. Um, so it's going to be interesting to gain that wisdom and counsel from him in my, uh, in my path to the, on this journey. And, um, you know, I'm excited to get to work with him a little bit, see what he, he can kind of offer me. Um, you know, I've watched a bunch of his matches. He's really explosive, so I'm I'm excited to kind of throw that into my game a little bit and see what else he has to offer. Um, I just think, you know, they just have a lot going on down there, and you know, their recruiting classes are getting better. I think the culture's starting to shift, and um, you know, I think some some good things are happening down there. So I'm excited to to join it and be a part of it. Yeah, and when you look at like the 65 kilo weight class, not just in the U.S. but like worldwide. I don't know if you've seen who's in the field for world, but it, it's pretty crazy, I guess. Um, yeah, how do you approach a season like 2020? With first of all, you've got to get past the U.S., which has got some amazing talent there, and then moving on to, yeah, taking on the world. Yeah, um, I mean, just every day this year. You know, for a lot of guys, it's a year of focus. Everybody hones in for the Olympic year. It's it's much more competitive than the world world years mm -hmm. with the weight classes, and then also guys that maybe come out of retirement, you never know. Um, so really just staying, staying sharp on my own. I mean, I need to get better every day. I need to eliminate distractions. I need to just be, be in tune and be all in. And, um, you know, I need to compete overseas. I need to get those feels and just, just expand my wrestling. Just always wrestling guys that are better than me, you know, same level, just progressing every day, getting better. And, um, like focusing on my focus areas. I mean, you can you can learn something new all the time, but you can also just hone in on things that you do do and make them better. And um, I think that's going to be a lot of it. Um, I'm excited to get overseas and compete. Haven't done that since. Uh, I mean, I didn't get to do that this year. Got last summer at Medved. That's about it. So it's been a while. Um, I'm excited to hopefully go overseas in October, November, um, prior to our little domestic season kicking up. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, we can wrap up with this one. What, it, what do you think your schedule looks like internationally and domestically? Yeah, um, I mean, I'd like to get to Russia in October, November. Um, domestically, there's the NYC Bill Farrell. Mm -hmm. Not sure which one it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that and then the U.S. Open, of course, in December. So right now, those are the main focus. Um, you know, I can't look past any match. I've done it before and didn't turn out too well. So just taking it one step at a time, keeping that focus and starting to create a plan that's gonna take me there. All right, very cool, thanks for your time. Thanks.